Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation 4, homebrew news, and much, much more. Today, we're going to be talking about the PlayStation 5, and more specifically, what can you do in order to apply the latest and greatest game patches on a console that is setting at 4.03? Now, 4.50 is the latest official PlayStation 5 firmware. And if you have a PlayStation 5 that is running on version 4.03, you can't connect to the PlayStation Network in order to play games online or to download games directly from the PlayStation Network store. But there is some alternatives that you can do, especially in scenarios where you only have one PS5, which I think the vast majority of folks currently have, or maybe even zero. Now, if you're wondering, why should you even stay on version 4.03? Well, I did a video on this not too long ago, but basically we have a WebKit exploit that's available in the version of the web browser setting at 4.03. Now, this is the first step out of two steps that's going to be needed in order for us to begin to run PlayStation 5 Homebrew. And the second piece is that we would need a kernel exploit. So your best chances or your best odds of being able to take advantage of that exploit and potentially PlayStation 5 homebrew is to stay on the lower versions. Now, brand new PlayStation 5s that are shipping right now are coming on 4.03. I personally am not aware of anyone who's gotten a PlayStation 5 by default that had 4.50 already installed on it, but that's going to be something that will be more widespread as the months go by. As a matter of fact, I would expect that consoles that are shipping in early April are all on 4.50, which this WebKit exploit no longer works on. So if you want to be able to potentially run PlayStation 5 Homebrew, then you are going to need a system that's on at least 4.03, as shown here, or lower. And so I realized that I've kind of explained this for maybe a little bit longer than what I should have. But what I want you to get out of this is, is that if you do have one PlayStation 5 that's at least on 4.03 or lower, you can still enjoy games such as the one that comes with the system to PlayStation 5 disc and PlayStation 4 disc and get the updates available for them. Okay, so every PlayStation 5 by default comes with Astro's Playroom, and we're going to go to Options and then Information, and we can see by default this game ships with 1.200. And now taking a look over here on a site that indexes PlayStation 5 updates, we can see that there was a patch for this game, which is 01.600, that came out around 2021-04-28, and this only requires system software of 03.00. So I would like to go ahead and take advantage of this patch right now on my PlayStation 5. Okay, so again, we can see that I'm running on 1.2 right here. We're going to go back to our settings. We're going to go into network, and right now our PlayStation 5 isn't connected to the internet, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to set up an internet connection and I'm going to go ahead and connect to my Wi-Fi and we're going to press OK here. OK, and it is connected now. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go back to the main menu here and we're going to go to options and we're going to select check for update. So when we do this, then what it's going to do automatically is, is that it is going to find that there is an update and it's going to begin downloading it. As you can see right here, it is 1.60 and now it's copying and now installing and now the game is updated. Once you do this, uh, what I would recommend is to head back over into your settings again, go into network and then go down to settings and then turn off connect to the internet. Now, there was a couple of reasons why I suggested after we downloaded the patch 
to go back in and turn off the connection to the internet. And the main one being that we don't want it to determine that we're running on 04.03. So we don't want it to download the update file because if it updates the file, we can't actually go in and delete that update, at least not like we can with PlayStation 4 and with PlayStation 4 Homebrew. So there is always the chances that somebody could accidentally trigger and update your PlayStation 5, which you wouldn't want. So now at this point, we have Astro's Playroom, and we'll just go ahead and we'll make sure that it applied that update. We'll go into information, and there is our 1.600, and we'll go ahead and run this game just to make sure everything is working as intended. Okay, so, and by the way, if you do not have a PlayStation 5 yet, and if you get one, you absolutely want to enjoy this game. Uh, this is some kind of neat tutorials on telling you a little bit more about your wonderful PlayStation 5 controller. And yeah, there's also, obviously, there's also motion sensor, so I'm just moving the controller around in my hand right now. And then for some reason, I always think this is so cool. You can blow into the little microphone and it will react. Okay, so back to the main menu. We have just determined that we were able to download the latest and greatest update to Astro's Playroom without connecting to the PlayStation Network. And we also haven't downloaded the system update which makes this PlayStation 5 in really great condition. So what about disc-based games, such as this one right here, which is Deathloop? Okay, inserting the disc to Deathloop brings us to this screen, where right now it's currently queued to copy, and now it is copying over. So this is very similar to what happens when you insert a PlayStation 4 disc on a PlayStation 4. It first begins copying all of the required files that's needed before you can actually run the disc. Okay, so it says now that it is ready to play. So let's go ahead and we're going to check information again. And here we are, we are setting at 1.00. And so let's go back into our settings. Let's go to network settings. And now since we connected to the internet once, all we have to do is toggle on connect to the internet. Give this a moment here. And now we're back connected again. Again, we're going to quickly go in to check for update because we want it to be downloading the game update, not the system update. And so here we go. It is downloading the version 1.201. And again, while that is downloading, you can see over here again on Deathloop that there was this patch, which is what we're downloading right now, 01.201, that's currently being downloaded. But the required firmware here is 04.03. So what would happen, Michael, if maybe I had a PS5 that was setting on version 4, what updates would I get? And well, it's really as easy as coming back in here and seeing that this version of 04.00, which is patch 01.100, this would be the absolute latest version that it would download. So you wouldn't get access to these two patches which requires an absolute minimum of 04.03. But the nice thing here is that if you were on a lower version of the firmware, then by default, all of these other patches that came out will automatically be rolled into it. So you would be able to get the latest and greatest files at least up to 01.100 if you were setting on a system with a software of 04.00. And okay, it looks like it is just about done, and now it is installing. So back over into network, we're going to quickly come back into our settings, and then we're going to deselect connect to internet, and we'll go back out to the game again, and then we're going to go back down to information, and now we can see we're at 1.201. .201. Okay, running the game. Just as a quick test here, 
and the game is being launched as it normally would. And yeah, for the most part, a lot of the PlayStation, you're not signed in screens. You can press X to just dismiss those. Okay, the game has been loaded. Okay, let's close out of this game. And the next thing that I think may be worth talking about is PlayStation 4 games. So by default, the PlayStation 5 can read your entire library of PlayStation 4 games. And all of those games work just as well as they worked when they were inside of your PlayStation 4. So let's take one of our games. I'm just going to grab Madden 21 since it was one that was the closest to me. And I'm going to insert that into my PlayStation 5. And as you can see here, it is now saying that it has been recognized and it is copying the game. And we'll go ahead and check the information on this game. So let's go down to information. And there we go. We're at version 1. Again, we're going to use that same method that we used before, which is we're just going to connect to the internet. And we're going to go back to the game immediately. We're going to check for an update. And it found the update, which is version 1.29. And it is starting to download, and it has been completed. Let's head back over into our settings. Let's go to network, and we will turn off the internet here. And let's go and check our information again. And there it is. It's at 1.29, which if we cross-reference this over with Orbis patches, then we can see 01.29 is the latest. And this was requiring firmware 8.50. Okay, back to the PlayStation 5. Let's go ahead and we will run this as another test. There we go. The game is loading up just fine. All right. So now we could play this PlayStation 4 game in our PlayStation 5, and it is completely patched. Now, I'm sure by now there has been a lot of questions and discussions, at least with this game, which is Horizon Forbidden West, that came out a week or two ago for the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. So if you have the PlayStation 4 disc of Horizon Forbidden West, then you can play that game disc in your PlayStation 5. And even though down here it says that 9.04 is the required firmware for it, you can actually update to the patch 01.06 on a version of the PlayStation 5, which is 04.03. But if you happen to have purchased the PlayStation 5 disc, the PlayStation 5 disc does require 4.50. So if you want to play Horizon Forbidden West on a PlayStation 5, you can do so setting at 04.03, and you can get the very latest and greatest patches for it. And I must call out that the same thing applies over here to Elden Ring. So Elden Ring will run along with the very latest patches on a PlayStation 5 that is running 4.03. So hopefully that clears up a bunch of things regarding the game patches and how they run or how they work on a PlayStation 5. Let's go ahead now and let's fix our network settings to prevent system software updates from automatically happening. So we'll go up to our network and then we're going to go down to settings. We are going to connect to the internet. We're going to go to setup and you should see your network connection already there. I'm going to press options here and we're going to go to advanced settings. And then from here, scroll down to where it says DNS settings and change that to manual. You're going to want to enter into your primary DNS 165.227.83.145. And then for the secondary DNS, you're going to want to simply enter 192.241.221.79.
and then you're going to want to select OK, and it should show that you are connected. So we can go ahead and double check this by going back to our settings system and going to system feature updates. And this is the screen that you should see. It says can't connect to the server. There may be a problem connecting to the network. If you see this, then that is a great sign because it means that it can't reach out to Sony to see if there is an update. Now, not only will this apply for these system feature updates, but it'll also apply to games as well. So in order to access the web browser, we can head back to our settings and then we can go up to user guide, user guide, and then user guide again, select yes to this dialog box. And there you go. You may see something that is very familiar and it should be because these are the same DNS settings that you use on the PlayStation 4. But what we're particularly interested in here is there is a way to redirect the URL by double tapping L2 on your controller. So let's go ahead and let's do that now. You can just navigate up to where it says URL redirector and we're just gonna type in Google here to start and we're gonna submit and here is our Google browser. And so there we go. We are searching for PlayStation 5 through Google on the PlayStation 5. And again, keep in mind, this web browser is not accessible as it is on like the PlayStation 4 where there is like an icon or an application uh, that you can launch to get to it. So let's go back to the main menu and let's go back to the URL redirector. And this time I'm just going to type in crump youtube dot github dot io and this will just simply bring you to a page where i've hosted this github repository that is the playstation 5 webkit execution which is about the rop user land execution for the playstation 5. so i've basically self-hosted this project just so i can test it but again all credits go to this person and to the team behind the work on that. So we'll go ahead and hit submit on that and we should see these three amazing dialog boxes. There's the first one, so getting the process ID. This is a pthread join result. And then there's this last one here, which is branch counter and last KQ. Okay, and so that is pretty much it. Well, I hope this sheds some light on at least game patches and how to prevent system updates on the PlayStation 5. If you enjoyed this video, definitely give me a like, drop some notes down into the comments below, and I greatly appreciate all the support each and every one of you has given me already. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Michael, out!